Hey guys, good to see you guys. Um, well, hopefully I will be able to see you guys in person uh, very soon. Um, as I'm sure you guys know uh, the whole virus thing and you guys are all at home and different things are happening. Um, different uh, decisions are being made from the governor and things like that. And how um, I think the most recent one is like you guys are going to be not going back to school at all uh, during the rest of the year. So how that impacts you guys as well. Um, so definitely keep thinking of you guys and uh, praying for you guys. Um, and I try to, I'm trying to reach out to you guys individually as well. Um, but I also want to say that if you guys want to reach out to me, uh, feel free to do so uh, through phone, Zoom, message, uh, Instagram, whatever ways that you would like to reach out to me. If you don't have any ways to do it, um, just ask somebody and how to contact me and uh, I will be more than willing and would love to uh, just even message or talk with you or even a face-to-face -face Zoom meeting as well. So just feel free to do that. Uh, it's up, up to you and I would like to just be available for you guys as well. Um, as you guys know, the Sunday sermon is always based on the that week's or, or this week's uh, Bible study. Uh, so this week's Bible study, if you guys got a chance to see that video, uh, was on suffering and specifically in the life of a believer. Um, so today's sermon will be on that as well. Uh, the book of Job, if you guys got a chance to read that, it's not a short book, but if you get a chance to read it, is a comforting story to those who are going through hard times. Um, it shows that we can trust in the Lord in the midst of hardship and suffering. Uh, and God's questioning of Job shows us that we can trust him uh, because he is the great and mighty God, creator, sustainer, and sovereign over all. God's always in control and knows what's going on. He is not absent. He is always wise and he's always good. His character is completely trustworthy. We trust him on his terms, not ours. I uh, just want to remind us that um, hard as it is just to hear it, uh, we will never understand uh, everything that is here on this earth and also what God is doing. Um, so faith is putting trust in Him when we don't understand. Faith is trusting in God's promises even if it goes against what you see and what you feel. And this may not sound good to you, and you will not like to hear it. But suffering in a believer's life, if you say that you are a Christian, is not a question of if, but when. Believers are called to imitation, uh, imitation of Jesus Christ. In other words, we are to follow Jesus and be his disciples. What does following Jesus mean? Um, is it just saying that I follow him? Or is it just showing or portraying that I follow him? Does Jesus have like an Instagram where you can search up Jesus and you click that follow button? We're going to turn to Luke chapter 9 verse 23 to 24 and I would encourage you to go pick up your Bible. Um, if you have it on your phone, that's fine. You can do that. But uh, I would highly recommend you guys get your physical Bible and open up your Bibles to Luke 9, 23, 24. And once you've gotten there, wait, and we're going to pray, and then we'll dive right in. Father God, thank you, Lord, for another day that you allow us to have. Lord, uh, we know that as we are learning more about you, I pray that that will turn into more worship of you uh, and a deeper relationship with you. Lord, I pray that as we are in this time right now where we are impacted as well as youth students i pray that we will look to you learn from you treat others as we want to be treated grow and worship more of you god please be with us lord we need you would you sustain us during this time so that we will not get weary but we'll be more and more hopeful in you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So if you guys have your Bibles to Luke 9, 23-24, 
You, I will read it if you will follow along with me. Then he said to them all, If anyone wants to come with me, he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me will save it. In this short passage right there, Jesus explains the cost of being his disciple, the cost of following him. And I want you to take note and remember a few things today. Denying yourself, carrying the cross daily, following Jesus. Wherever Jesus went, there was always a crowd. And while many did follow Jesus as the Messiah, they followed him for the wrong reasons. As you guys know, I said it a few times before, they thought that he would free them from the Roman Empire. And like how Jesus fed them miraculously, they followed him for the wrong reasons. And we read in Luke that Jesus gathered not only his disciples, but also the crowd that was gathered to make a very important announcement. He says, if you follow me, know that you have to deny yourself and carry your cross every day. And when people heard this, many of the shocked followers rejected him and stopped following him. To be honest, we want to follow Jesus without denying ourselves and taking up our cross daily, every day. But according to Jesus, that's not possible. We convince ourselves that denying our desires, our thoughts, our feelings is optional. But Jesus speaks to everyone who wants to follow him. Following Jesus is easy when life runs smoothly. But a true commitment to him is revealed during trials and sufferings. Jesus even said that trials will come to his followers in John chapter 16, verse 33. There is a sacrifice in following Jesus, and Jesus never hid that. If you haven't noticed it by now or never knew before, following Jesus is going to be tough. Many will say that they will follow Jesus, as many has said when he was here on earth, but many failed to count the cost of following him. And many was not willing to take up his cross and sacrifice their own interests and desires. Denying yourself is saying no to yourself, but not stopping there, but saying yes to God and his will for your life. So let's make it real personal to ask some of these questions to you and ask yourself these questions. If someone said to you that you will lose your closest friends if you follow Jesus, would you follow Jesus? If someone said to you that you will lose your popularity if you follow Jesus, would you choose Jesus? If someone said to you that you can have everything that you ever wanted for life, now and forever, if you deny Jesus, would you? Following Jesus doesn't necessarily mean all these things that I mentioned will happen to you, but are you willing to take up your cause and deny yourself daily. If there ever comes to a moment in your life where you have to make a choice, Jesus, or the comforts of this life, this world, I want to ask, which will you choose? Following Jesus means taking up your cross daily, giving up your hopes, dreams, possessions, even your very life, if need be, for Jesus. And the reward is worth the price. As Jesus called the cost of following him, he also speaks about the gift of life in him. He says, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Now I'll be real with you guys. Following Jesus daily is it's not easy. It's going to be tough. It's going to be rough. And there will be times when we don't feel like it because it is so tough. 
How can we keep going, keep following Jesus on a daily basis when it is so tempting to just give up? I think it depends on where your focus is on. So let me illustrate with a story to help you see that. There was a person named Florence Chadwick. She was an American swimmer known for long distance open water swimming. If you guys are more interested about her, I encourage you to go Google and find out more about her. But for this story, in 1952, she attempted to swim from an island off the coast of Southern California to the shoreline. This was a 26 mile swim and she trained and prepared for months. Then it was the day of the challenge and she went to the island. For safety reasons, she had small boats, her coach, other people, and her mom, and they would be around her as she was swimming in the water. They would watch to see if she needed help, if she got tired, if she got hurt, and they could just easily pull her back in. About 15 hours into the swim, a thick fog rolled in, and she could barely see anything in front of her. The water was getting colder, and her legs were starting to cramp. She began to doubt. Her mother kept trying to encourage her and cheer her on to keep going. But after a little while, she gave up. And after they pulled her up into one of the boats, she was told that she only had one mile left until she reached the coast. She didn't give up, and after training again for two months, she attempted the challenge again. It all started like her first attempt, and the fog again showed up. Again, her mom encouraged her and cheered her as before, and this time, she didn't give up, and she finished the 26-mile swim. And after she got out of the water, many reporters were waiting and asked her how she was able to make it with all the fog and all those harsh conditions. And her response was simply, I kept a mental picture of the California coastline in my mind. Basically, she never lost sight of her end goal. Her focus was on the finish line. As she swam, her focus wasn't behind her or around her or how many miles that she swam or how many was left or the tough circumstances that she was in. The water was cold, the waves were high and choppy, the fog was thick. Trials will come for everyone. If we focus only on our circumstances and lose sight of Christ, we will give up. In our lives, whatever you are going through, you must look to Jesus and fix your eyes on Him. Because Jesus Christ is our destination. He is our end goal. So let us fix our eyes upon him. As we deny ourselves and carry the cross daily, let us focus on Jesus and take one step further in obedience. Let's pray. Father God, thank you, Lord, for your word today. God, it's a word that we need to hear pretty much every single day. That we need to count the cost of following you. And Lord, for many of us, we have not counted that cost. Lord, for many of us, we spout with our lips and proclaim with only our mouths that Jesus, you are Lord and Savior. But God, there is no evidence of that in our lives. Perhaps it's out of fear or perhaps it's out of different reasons, whatever it may be, God. I pray, Lord Father God, that we would be honest, and you would show us more clearly, Lord, what it means to follow you. God, may your word reveal to us more and more of not only who we are, but who you are. May we see our sin, and may we repent, and may we follow you. Thank you, God, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, for showing grace to us, especially when we don't deserve anything from you. Thank you, Lord, for your word again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. I'll see you guys next week.